What is up, Tree of Life chiropractic fans and uh, patients and anyone watching this? Um, I don't know if we actually have fans, but welcome to our webinar that we're doing tonight. We just finished a busy evening and day here at the office with lots of families, and Dr. Chelsea and I are super blessed to um, have the privilege to work with all of you guys every single day. So thank you. And today is going to be a really important webinar. We're going to be talking about boosting the immune system naturally. And before we get into that, I want to give you guys a uh, visual of what we're going to be talking about. And so if you look here, I don't know if you can see it. This is a cup, okay? This is a cup full of 100 pennies, okay? 100 pennies. And each of these pennies represents 1% of the deaths during this pandemic from COVID, okay? So every penny is 1% of death. Now, if I take out... Five of these pennies, okay? So I got five pennies right here, okay? This is what's left, still a lot, right? 95 pennies representing 95 of the deaths from COVID-19. If we think about that, why is this representation important? 95% of the deaths from COVID-19 had on average four or more comorbidities or diseases, four or more, okay? And I'd like to share that because when we talk about um, improving our health naturally, part of that is how we can respond to illness, how we can respond to environmental, environmental stressors that come at us, right? Four or more comorbidities or disease. So if you wanna improve your odds and ability to fight off COVID and, and improve your health and be as healthy as possible, we gotta remove these four comorbidities. We gotta either prevent them from happening with our kiddos or for a lot of us adults, we gotta get rid of some of them, right? We gotta start making different decisions to be as healthy as possible. Because if you're doing all the other things, following the narrative, following the mandates, following these things, which are fine, and we're not, I'm not gonna argue two and four on those, but if you're, you're missing the boat, if you're not also taking the responsibility to change those comorbidities and disease factors. And so that's what we're talking about today is how can we improve our health? So all the outside in things we're doing, all the things we're doing, whether that be mandates, whether that's staying at home, whether it's closing down, whether that's you know, not being able to do the things we love. If you're doing those, but not taking care of your health, you're missing the boat. And what's gonna happen, there's gonna be another pandemic. There's gonna be another COVID-19 at some point. And so we wanna improve our health as much as we can for us, but, and also our children. So today we're gonna to be talking about us as adults because one, this past year, one thing I learned is our kiddos are watching us. They're watching us how we handle adversity, how we handle stress, how we actually take care of our health. And so it's on us to be, make the right decisions for ourselves and then in turn, bring them along for the ride to show them how to be healthy. And so we're gonna be talking about you adults tonight, but um, all the things that we're gonna be talking about here is gonna be a list of them. Um, we, Dr. Chelsea and myself, are doing those for our daughter Nova as well. Um, so they're gonna be really important. So um, taking care of our health, we wanna become one of those five pennies, right? Those five pennies that um, are on a healthier form. Actually, we don't want to be any pennies because they're, they're COVID deaths, so let, let me rephrase it. We want to be as healthy as possible so we can fight off this, right? The health of the host is so important. And so um, we're gonna be talking about this because one, it's an important concept right now to talk about. Secondly, our kids are going back to school. And so if we want to go back to school and be as healthy as possible, that's gonna be really important. So um, let's get this going. So the first topic we're gonna do to improve our health naturally is gonna be a healthy diet, okay? And most of these things are gonna be research backed. If you need research, uh, most of these are gonna be relative to COVID right now because that is the big fancy phrase that everyone's talking about. Um, and so we're gonna talk about how to improve our adaptability and our ability to fight off disease and illness and things like that. So the first one we're gonna talk about is blood sugar and insulin. So obesity and um, o overweight um, individuals were at the highest risk. 78% of hospitalizations this past year due to COVID were diagnosed as obese or overweight. And so that's the first one we wanna talk about. And so high glucose levels in our blood actually allow microorganism, microorganisms to thrive better, causing infections and immunity issues. Um, high glucose in our blood also um, decreases and creates abnormal functioning white blood cells and many other reactions as that glucose is broken down that makes us more susceptible. Um, so when we talk about blood sugar and insulin, there's a lot of things we can do to really address that, but one great thing you can do right now is make sure you're focusing on a low glycemic index food diet, right? Um, keep your sugar levels low because all those bad things we're talking about 
are going to feed off on sugar. And so if we can limit the sugar, teach our body how to adapt and function differently and get energy differently, um, we're going to be better off. The next one we're going to talk about is vitamin D. So uh, research has shown that um, by having optimal levels of vitamin D, you actually can decrease getting the flu by 58%. Um, another large study done um, this past year showed that vitamin, vitamin D deficiency increases your risk of COVID-19 infection by 80%. 80%. Um, I would love to see that on the news more, right? Because if we could decrease our susceptibility to getting COVID-19 by 80%, I think everyone should be doing that. And so um, vitamin D is an absolutely crucial. And this was a large um, meta-analysis study um, done over 14 different hospitals. And the best way to get vitamin D is gonna be um, D3. is gonna be one of your most readily absorbed versions of it. So if, you, if you're gonna take vitamin D, D3 is a great version of it. Um, and you wanna have 1,000 IUs per 25 pounds of body weight. That's what I've found in a lot of different research and a lot of people um, have written down. We use that in our family. So 1,000 IUs for every 25 pounds of body weight. Um, so that's a great way to do it. The next one we're gonna talk about is intermittent fasting. Um, whether that's fasting for 24 hours or just intermittent fasting for a period of time. Um, if you think about animals in nature, when animals are under high stress or not are ill, um, they stop eating because they want to actually reduce the stress on their internal system and food takes a lot of energy okay so if we th if think about animals doing this it's also really important for us and um, humans are actually the only species that eats when we're under stress we're the only species that eats when we're under stress and so that's something to be really aware of um, fasting also can improve immune regulation it stimulates cellular um, autophagy, so that's basically um, breaking down old or damaged cells, okay? It improves genetic repair mechanism, starves cancer cells, which are going and reproducing your body all the time. Um, another really interesting thing that I just recently read yesterday was that um, looking back at the Holocaust concentration camps, respiratory illness was very, very rare. And the big reason why they think that is is because of the fact that um, people within these camps were just unable to eat. So their fasting levels, their food intake was low, their calorie restriction was, was a big deficit. And so um, they found that there was very little respiratory illness in these concentration camps. Um, I'm still learning and researching that one, so that one's a really interesting one to me. Um, the next thing we're gonna talk about in terms of diet is vitamin C. And something I didn't know that I recently learned that vitamin C actually, once you have the flu or once you are ill, does very little um, to help you under illness. And so it's best as a preventative measure. And um, research has shown that individuals under high stress can cut their number of illnesses in half with vitamin C um, supplementation. So if you're a parent, you're under stress, all of us parents should be supplementing with vitamin C. Um, our kiddos should be doing it as well. And um, when you do vitamin C, uh, botanical sources, so real sources are better off than um, superficial or synthetic. And um, we should be getting two to three times our daily recommended amount right now. So two to three times. And try not to do the sugary stuff. I mean, you get those little packets at the store. Um, get a more natural version. You can be better off with that. The next one with health for boosting your immune system we're going to talk about is the gut. So up to 70% of our immune response comes from our gut. And so it's a really, really important part of our body to be able to thrive and function and be healthy. And so we should avoid processed foods. We should focus on fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, fermented foods, and protein. Um, a study that came out this past year studying the habits, eating habits of children in our country in the United States showed that 67% of the food our kids are eating is not real food. It is packaged, flavored, sugared, carbohydrate-filled, ultra-processed foods. 67% of our children's diets. And that food is horrible for our gut. It's horrible for our health. Um, if you're talking about insulin you know, issues and glucose issues and obesity, these foods, the stuff we're feeding our kids, we're feeding ourselves is not helping us at all. Um, so really being aware of what food we're putting in and its effect on our gut is gonna help boost our immune system. The next one is sleep. Um, our gut flora, flora, the actual bacteria, the good bacteria in our gut, is actually influenced by our circadian rhythms and rest. So the more rest we get, the better off that's gonna be. 
the more high stress we are, the worse that gut flora is gonna be. So that's a really important one. And taking that, a very good quality probiotic um, is gonna be really important. Um, you can take as a toddler, as an infant, you can actually take really high quality probiotics. So that's something to look into. And the next one is water. Water is really important. So 75% of our brain is actually water. And um, water removes waste, improves digestion and nutrient absorption. It improves regulation of our organs. It hydrates all of our cells, um, improves our blood and heart circulation, and helps regulate temperature. And so we need to be drinking as much water as possible. Again, getting rid of the sugary stuff and increasing your intake of water is gonna make a big difference for our health and boost our immune system. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is healthy lifestyle. Um, and this one's gonna be a, a lot focused on movement. So exercise, regular exercise helps you know, maintain normal weight. It improves cardiovascular health. It reduces risk of chronic disease such as diabetes, insulin resistance. It improves mental health. So we talk about anxiety, depression, improves our immune system. Um, it actually improves lymphatic drainage in our body. It actually increases white blood cells and antibodies. It's gonna help us fight off stuff. Um, so exercise is really, really important. Um, it also flushes out our respiratory system. So going out and running and breathing heavy is actually gonna help our respiratory system get rid of all the different junk that we get in there. So that's gonna be really important. And if you can't exercise, move. Just get moving as much as you can. Um, it makes a big difference. Break it up if you need to throughout the day. Um, another one is exposure. Nature's our best, best friend. We need to get outside. We, our kids need to get in the dirt. We need to get in the dirt. Um, research shows that gardeners who are in their hands in the dirt on a regular basis actually live longer. Um, exposure to dirt and bacteria has been shown in research to um, reduce symptoms of ADD, um, ADHD, and dementia by 47%. Um, it's going to improve cardiovascular health, um, improve immune function. And so, you know, our immune system is really like a muscle. You know, we talked about exercise. We need to exercise it and move it and push it. And so, Letting our kids play with other kids, letting our kids go to the playground, um, be around other kids, maybe even get sick, you know, heaven forbid, um, is gonna actually improve their immune system, allow their body to learn how to function, create real antibodies, and um, improve their immune function. So that's one of the best ways to improve your immune system is allow it to work and do its job um, because our bodies are smarter than anything else you're gonna find. And so exposure to our outdoors is gonna be crucial. So. The next thing we're gonna talk about is sleep. So as adults, we should be getting seven to nine hours of sleep per night, and uh, it depends on the individual. But sleep is really important. It allows our body to heal and recover from long days. Um, studies actually show that sleep deprivation can radically increase your vulnerability to infectious diseases. Um, so there's an easy fix right there. Um, sleep improves immune cells known as T cells, which help fight pathogens in our body. Um, also, while we're sleeping, our stress hormones decrease, which allows our body to um, fight off illness and infection way easier as well. So sleep's gonna be really important. Um, poor sleep shows um, an increase in inflammation, blood pressure, insulin resistance, cortisol, weight gain, cardiovascular disease, um, as well as decreased blood sugar um, regulation. So if you look at that alone, poor sleep is gonna to contribute to all of those comorbidities we talked about at the very start of the video in terms of what is gonna make us more susceptible to death when it comes to COVID. So make sure we're getting really good sleep. Make sure our kids got a good sleep pattern. Um, routine is really important for that, um, just as it is for us as well to get good sleep. The next one we're gonna talk about is positive men um, mentality. So there's a lot of research coming out um, showing that gratefulness can actually lead to better immune response, um, which is really cool. And there's not a lot of that this year. So. It's really hard to be op optimi happy and optimist right now and to be positive. So I um, hope that you guys are able to do that and uh, find the benefits, whether that's through prayer, um, through our faith, or that could be through community, through friends, uh, meditation, whatever that may be. Really focus on what's in here, um, not what's on the screen in front of us. And I think that will have a huge effect on our health and our mental well-being. Um, there's a really cool study that I read that was done on law students. and. They basically tracked and studied these law students over a period of their academic career. And they found that the students had a better positive mindset and optimism um, had a better immune response. So this says the study which tracked changes in optimism and immune response among first year law students found that as students became more optimistic, 
They showed stronger cell-mediated immunity, the flood of immune cells that respond to invasion by foreign viruses or bacteria. When optimism dropped, so did cell-mediated immunity. And they found that the, the lower the optimism levels and scores in these law students, the more often they were sick and felt down during the year. So um, make sure we really focus on what's between our ears and be positive, and that's gonna be absolutely crucial. And then the last one we're gonna talk about is chiropractic care, because this is a really important one. If you look at research from the 1918 Spanish flu, you look at how chiropractic has a huge role in that. If you look in our office, um, we have a lot of healthy families and kids, and part of that is not just because healthy people realize that chiropractic care is important, but chiropractic, chiropractic care makes a huge difference on how our body is able to regulate and balance, okay? Our brain, our body, every cell, tissue, and organ is all connected. And so as chiropractors, we want to make sure there's balance, make sure everything's functioning with ease, right? We measure that with our instrumentation to know what's going on. We adjust. And one of the best things to do if you're under high stress, if you are feeling down, is to get adjusted. Getting adjusted actually increases the parasympathetic response, increases your immune system, helps your gut to heal and thrive and be as healthy as possible. So I hope you guys got a lot of information out of that. If you have questions about any of these things, whether it's chiropractic or it's just being happier or just your health in general, we wanna be a resource for you. I hope you guys um, have a great night and are healthy and blessed and we'll talk to you soon. All right.